Ahlan, welcome back. All right, for this section, we're going to introduce you to a, a very important symbol. Now, this is technically does not count as a letter, uh, so we're kind of slipping this one in with the 28 letters that we have in Arabic, but it's actually very common, and then you'll see this on a lot of words, and this is called ta-mabuta, okay, ta-mabuta. Now, I'll show you the way this looks, but first, point out that this symbol can only appear at the end of a word. We have a few of these in Arabic that only appear at the end of the word. Now, the good news is it's going to look like something you've seen before. If you remember this symbol and this, these were two versions of the ha that we learned way, uh, way back in the beginning. This is the ha, that light H sound when it's by itself, and this was it when it was at the end of a word. Now, if you remember back then, I told you do not put any dots on this. Why? Because we're going to need them now. I take this exact same symbol, and I put two dots on it. Now, this is one. It only has a two-dot variation. There's no one, no three. That's it. I put two dots on it, and we have something that's called tamabuta. Okay, and this can only appear at the end of a word as I say. So let's take a look at how this works. All right, here I have a word that you saw earlier in this lesson. This is the word tabib. Tabib. As I told you, tabib means uh, doctor. Now, as I said, we can only put tamabuta on the end of a word. So I'm going to put it on the end of this word here. And that requires me to make a slight adjustment to my ba. I'm going to add tamabuta to the end of my word. Okay? It looks kind of like a ha, but it has the two dots on it. Now, the sound of this, uh, for our purposes, we're going to simplify things and say the sound of this letter makes an a uh, sound, like a short vowel feta. Now, if you look in an actual Arabic grammar book, they're going to give you a much more complicated explanation than that, but that's what is going to end up being the end result. Just trust me, when you put this at the end of a word, it makes an a ah sound. So we had tabib, tabiba. Tabib, tabiba. Well, why do I point this out? Because this has a very important function. Most of the time, the addition of tamabuta to the end of a word makes the word feminine. And in fact, this is where in Spanish, you notice a lot of Spanish words end with a, señor, señora. Okay? Spanish is derived in, in large part uh, from Arabic. This is one of the heritages from it. And so oftentimes when you hear at the end of a word, tabiba, ustada, that means that the word is feminine. When you see this at the end of a word, you can generally assume that the word is feminine. Now, of course, it wouldn't be any fun if there weren't some variations. Okay, there are some variations where this appears on a word and that's not what it means, but well over 90% of the time, this is making a word feminine. Now, that's important because in Arabic, we have words that can switch genders. These are particularly things that refer to people. So, tabib is a male doctor by definition. Tabiba is a female doctor. Uh, and you have to specify when you talk about someone, if someone is a professor, we have to specify is that ustad or ustada. Okay, the gender has to be specified. But like a lot of uh, words in other languages, if you learn French, if you learn Spanish, you learn that common nouns have genders. Tables, doors, houses have genders. Okay, so a lot of nouns are going to end with this on them, and that's indicating to you that they're feminine, and that has implications. So let's look at this in some words. Okay, notice I have three words here. Notice they all end in tamabuta. Uh, two of them are connected, one's not, because it's following a non-connecting letter. But it's easy to recognize. Now, you would look at these and you would guess that these three things are all feminine, and you'd be correct. These are all very common nouns, and they're all feminine. Let's look at the first one. Now put the vowels on it to help you. Okay? This is madrasa. 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 You may have heard this word before. Madrasa is a school. Okay? 
Here's a very common word. A meme, ma, ma, and then a dal, an e, and a noon. Madina. Madina, Madina. Medina, Medina means city. All right. uh, here's another one. This is uh, a little bit uh, tricky the pronunciation. This is a diphthong. Say, sayya, sayara, sayara, sayara is car. Okay. These are all very common words, and you can see they all end in tamabuta, which means they are all feminine. And if a word's feminine, we're going to have to do certain things with it. But this is a very important thing to recognize. Now, as I said, tamabuta can only appear at the end of a word. Well, what happens if it doesn't? What if I have to add something to this word? As you've seen in Arabic, instead of using a lot of different words, we tend to add things on. Like we learned, to make something possessive, I add an e to the end of the word. Well, we told you to do that, but here, We've got tamabuta, and I just told you that you can't, uh, tamabuta has to appear at the end of the word. Well, what are we going to do? Well, here's the rule, and this is a very important rule to remember as a beginner. It's something that tends to trip a lot of people up. It's hard to remember, but um, it, it's very important is if something follows tamabuta, which is fairly common, this changes into a regular ta in all senses of the word. It's going to be written that way, pronounced that way. It will be a ta. Okay. Now, you're probably noticing these look very similar. That's why this is called ta marbuta. Marbuta means tied. This is technically called the tied, tied up T. If you connected this thing here, that's what this would be. This is grammatically considered a variation on the tab. As you've seen, it's written based on the ha sound. Okay. It only makes the ta when we have to add something to it. So let's take a look at these examples. So I have here medrasa, school. But I told you we can put an e on it to make it my. So what if I want to say my school? Well, this tamabuta is going to go away transform into a ta in, in all senses. It's a real live ta. And I'm going to pronounce it. So I had medresa. Now, you don't say medresa e. No, because this is now a ta. Medresa t. Medresa t. It's pronounced. Same thing with Medina. If I want to say my city, okay, I have to change tamabuta to a regular old ta, and then I add the suffix. Now I had Medina, remember? Now I have to pronounce this, Medina T, Medina T, Madrasa T, Medina T. Now that might sound different to you now, but you'll get used to noticing this. As soon as you hear Madrasa T, you'll know that's a Madrasa belonging to E. Okay. And lastly, sayara, again, this changes to a ta, sayara, t. Now, this is just for adding the e. As you're going to learn, there's a lot of other things we can add to the end of a word. We can add a suffix to make it yours, his, theirs, our, okay? Uh, and this is always what happens. Remember, it's like this at the end of a word, but if we add something onto it afterwards, it changes to a ta. So never ever write this in the middle of a word. Okay? Now this is one of the most important grammar points you're going to learn. So remember this. We have some exercises to practice, uh, and so go forth and do those. I think you'll get a lot out of them, and we look forward to seeing you again for our next lesson. Shukran jazeelan wa ma salama.